Hello everyone, so today we're looking at the explanations for forgetting, interference and following along with the AQA psychology textbook for A level year 1 and AS with the green haired girl on. So the things you need to know and be able to recognise, your specification point is explanations for forgetting, proactive and retroactive interference. Now you're going to need to know the difference between that and I'll show you how you can remember that and the way that I do so. And also if a question comes up and it says explanations for forgetting somewhere in there and doesn't specifically say interference theory or retrieval failure, it wants you to talk about both of these explanations. So interference theory, what do we mean by interference? So this is forgetting as one memory blocks another. And what that does is it results in one or both of those memories being distorted or forgotten. So they conflict each other. Interference theory is an explanation for forgetting in long term memory. So you once your information has reached long-term memory, it remains there and it's permanent. But what happens is this forgetting takes place because we cannot access what is already in our long-term memory, despite it being available. So interference between memories makes it harder for us to find them. So we experience this forgetting. So now we have your types of interference. Now students get confused about this, never want it to come up as their big 16 marker or their 12 marker, but it will do at some point. You need to be prepared for this because if you are, you will be ahead of so many students because a lot of students will just not understand it and will lose so many marks, which is where you can gain on others. So a way I re remember this is proactive interference Pro is three letters long and old is three letters long. Pro has an O in it and so does old. So therefore it means old interferes with new, which then means retro has to be the opposite, where a new memory interferes with an older memory. So I think the best way to understand this is using an example. So your textbook looks at teachers and names. So your teacher has learned so many names in the past that she has difficulty remembering the names of her current class. So with proactive, you need to think of a past event and then you could compare that to something now and you have difficulty remembering it. So that's why I've got this moving house example as well. So if you've lived in a house for a long time and you've got a postcode, you know it. You move to a new house and you have a new postcode, but because you've lived elsewhere previously, you have difficulty remembering the new postcode because your old one interferes with your now current one. So that's how I remember proactive. And then because the opposite, the new interferes with old, this is your retroactive interference. So let's think of another example for that. So your textbook talks about your teacher has learned so many new names this year that she has difficulty remembering the names of students from last year. So it's now something new. You know something really well, something new. But because you've got that new thing, you now can't remember whatever was there previously. So that's why it talks about not being able to remember the names of previous students. But another example is if you have a car registration plate. So you change cars, you get a new car that's got a new registration plate. You now remember that one because that's your new one and that's what you now know. But when you try and think back to your old number plate, you have difficulty remembering it because your new one interferes with your older one. So now we have effects of similarity. So this was studied by McGoach and McDonald in 1931. And what they found was that interference is worse when the memories or learning are similar so they studied retroactive interference. So if you remember, that's a new memory interfering with an old memory. And participants had to learn a list of words until they could remember them with 100% accuracy. And then they had to learn a new list. And that new list depended on which group they were in. So there were six different groups. And the way I remember this is because of the first letter of each of the groups in terms of what what they were given. So saw nth 
So you've got synonyms for group one, antonyms for group two, group three words unrelated to the original, group four nonsense syllables, group five three digit numbers, and group six had no new list, they just rested. And we find that when the participants record the original list, their performance depended on the nature of the second list. So those that were given the synonyms, so that's the words that are similar, they produced the worst recall because they were similar to that original material they learned in that first list. So therefore interference is strongest when the memories are similar. OK, so we've now got some evaluation points that we'll look through. So we have a strength, first of all. So we've got evidence from lab studies and we can say that we've got some positive effects in terms of labs because many labs have carried out showing the effects of interference in studies. So you can use that McGoach and McDonald here as an example. And most studies have shown that both types of interference are ways we forget in long term memory. So we've got this good bank of support and it's a strength because lab experiments can control for irrelevant influences. They have a high control over extraneous variables and this gives us confidence that interference is a valid explanation for some forgetting. We also have a limitation, which is artificial materials. So we're more likely to see interference in lab studies rather than real life. And this is because we're using these artificial materials, these consonant syllables, and they have no meaning to anybody. So ZWL doesn't mean anything. And that's kind of very different to what we do in everyday life, which is where we try and remember people's faces and when people's birthdays are, things like that. So it's a limitation because Interference is more likely to happen in a lab if you're giving people tasks that they don't normally do in everyday life. So interference may not be as likely an explanation for forgetting in everyday life as it is in the lab. And then we've got a strength here, real life studies. And this is Badley and Hitch, 1977. So what they wanted to do was find out if interference was a better explanation for forgetting than the passage of time. So think of rugby players now. So they each play different games. So not all of the rugby players play each week. So some had missed games. And so for some, their last game was three weeks ago, even four weeks ago. But others had played since. So some had played last week, two weeks ago. And the accurate recall didn't depend on how long ago the matches took place. So it's not to do with the passage of time. More important was the amount of games they had played in the meantime. So it depended on what game was their last. And that depended on whether they could remember previous ones. And what we find is that a player's memory who had played three weeks ago was much better if they hadn't played a match since. So that shows that interference can be applied to some everyday situations. A further limitation is time between learning. So in experiments looking at interference, that's created normally with the maximum potential for it to occur. And an example is the amount of time between learning something, so a list of words, and asking participants to recall them. Now, in experimental studies, for practical reasons, the time period has to be short, otherwise participants may withdraw from the study. So a participant may be asked to learn a list of words, and then 20 minutes later, they might be asked to recall them. But generally, in everyday life, people do not learn things in a short period, They're not, and then asked to recall it. We often learn something and then recall it much later, so like months or even years later. So if you're in lesson and you're learning a topic and then you revise it, it's likely that you're revising it a few weeks before the exam and then you've got to recall it in the exam. So the longer the time between learning and recall, the less likely there is actually to be any interference because you're not doing it straight away. You've had time and then when there is time between that learning and recalling, there's not as much interference. So therefore, lab studies may be overestimating the importance of interference. 
A final limitation is interference effect may be overcome using cues. So Tulving and Pasotka in 1971 gave participants five lists of 24 words, and each list was organized into six categories. So it was assumed that the participants would recognize these categories. So the recall was about 70% for the first list, but this fell as participants were given additional lists, and it was assumed to be due to interference. But at the end, they were then given a cued recall test, so this is different, they were told the names of the categories and then recall rose to about 70%. So interference may not be a valid explanation as if interference theory was correct, the word should disappear completely from memory and they should no longer be available to be recalled. So they should perform poorly on a queued recall test as the memory should have completely disappeared but that didn't happen so the memory of the lists weren't available but they were accessible when that queued recall test was given okay so i've just had a look through the exam papers and this is from an as paper one from june 2017 so this is your 12 mark question. Describe and evaluate interference as an explanation for forgetting. You may use this space to plan your answer. Always plan if they give you a box. In terms of these sorts of questions, this is where students will fall down. If they've given you a box, it is because they need you to think before as students generally make mistakes on these types of questions where a box is given. So make sure you've got it clear what you're going to write for interference do not get it confused try and use the examples giving examples really illustrates it to your examiner this is an as paper so your split between describe and evaluate is equal it's a six marks for ao1 and it's a six marks for ao3 in terms of that i always suggest three evaluation points but you've got to develop them to get those six marks so here's your different band levels, your marks for this question. If you look at the differences between level four and level three, it is so easy to fall back into level three if you're not reaching that top band level. So here you've got to look at there's occasional inaccuracies omissions for level three whereas you can't have these confusing points for level four it generally is accurate and well detailed so you've got to show that you understand that is how you'll get in that top band the key is to understand your content so here is the possible content it's all the stuff we have just been talking about you can give positives you can give limitations your strengths for evaluation any of it and you can bring in that research like badly and hitch the real life study with the rugby players can be brought in your issues of validity talk about your artificial materials your tasks that have been shown in research possible content for ao1 use what we've got in your textbook and remember you can always turn the effects of similarity into ao3 but for this type of question you probably will want to use that somewhere but it's essential that you make six clear points so that you're getting a mark for each in your ao1 description so we have another question here from an a level paper one from june 2018 Aaron was upset as he left the Spanish exam in the unfamiliar room and full of nerves, his mind had gone completely blank. He was regretting studying both French and Spanish because he was sure he had mixed up lots of the words. Outline one explanation of forgetting. How might this explanation account for Aaron's poor performance in the Spanish exam? Now, outline one explanation of forgetting. That refers to either spread in terms of interference theory or retrieval failure. Remember, you need to know what that phrasing means, explanation of forgetting. So you can talk about retrieval failure or interference here. Many students will go for retrieval failure simply because they won't get it confused as much. And also make sure you're linking into Aaron. So here's your mark scheme. If you go for retrieval failure, you must focus on forgetting. So you've got to look 
and say that forgetting is due to the absence of cues. He is in a different room when he does the Spanish exam. It's a different environment. Link it to Aaron because it's got these possible applications. OK, and then your interference option, which is what fewer students will go for because they get confused over this. You will explain what interference is. So it's when two memories conflict, confuse, become mixed up with each other. And then you can apply it to Aaron. So he's mixed up slash confused words from another subject, which has caused him to forget. You can mention your proactive or your retroactive as well in the answer. Another question which followed on from question eight, which we just looked at, was this. And this tricked a lot of students because they potentially just talked about one which they didn't have an evaluation point up their sleeve for. So this is a common mistake that students make. The exams try and trick you. You should always look ahead of the question that you're answering in case it refers to the one you've just chosen. So if you've just written in question eight, which was talking about Aaron, about interference theory, and then you're asked to briefly evaluate the explanation that you've outlined in question eight, you must have evaluation for that one, for interference theory. But if you've outlined retrieval in the question eight, you then must have evaluation for retrieval failure. You can't then change whichever one it is and then write evaluation. It has to be the same one as what you outline in question eight. So it's almost giving you a choice here of what you picked on question eight, but then that also has to be evaluated in question nine. So if we look at the mark scheme, we have retrieval failure, which you could have used because you would have put that for question eight. And then we have your interference theory, which you would have used on question eight, depending on which one it says here or. So you can't at the bottom if the explanation evaluated is not the explanation at, outlined in question eight, no credit at all. So you would lose all four marks there. This is evaluation. You've got to be explicit, very clear about your answer. OK, thank you for listening. I hope that helps and best of luck with the rest of your revision.